Hi, my name is Dhananjay. I'm one of the mentors here at EGMAT. Now, as you can see, the title of the slide is what does it take to get into Harvard with an 85% scholarship? Forget about just getting into Harvard, but imagine getting 85% scholarship from Harvard to study right there. Well, Valentin uh, did this and he scored a 760 on the GMAT. So that was a Q49 and a V45. And through this video, I'm going to take you through who Valentin is, how he was able to do this, and what other things that got him to that 760 level and, of course, got him into Harvard, right? Now, let's, let's get into you know, setting the right context. Who is Valentin? Now, Valentin is a guy who's working in BCG. He works about 12 hours a day, so that's about 50 to 60 hours a week. That leaves him very little time to study across the entire day. And what he did was he managed to find some time early in the morning and then late at night after work. And the first thing that he did was, of course, he attacked the Manhattan books and the OG books. And a month or two later, he kind of took a mock and he found that listener scored a 620 and that was nowhere where he wanted to be and nowhere where he wanted to go. He wanted to apply to Harvard. So he asked himself, what do I need to do to change this? So finding that that element that kind of didn't work for him and, and he realized that, you know, whatever I'm doing right now is not really clicking for me. And that's that's where uh, EG Matt entered. And that's that's very, very important for any student to do to really identify what the problem is, how to fix it, and just take that call at the right time. Now, let me jump into talking about his account. Now, the few things that you're gonna see in his account is, uh, you, you'll basically see three very, very important and valuable things. Process, which is the, the three stages teaching pedagogy that we have, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, and the second one is consistency, how consistent he was when he, you know, used the course. And then, of course, uh, the final part is support, right? The support that he got from Archit and, and throughout his entire journey to kind of get there. And that would be very visible over here through his account walkthrough, but I'll show you how, right? Uh, but let's go back to the slides here. What is What are the three tenets that, you know, helped him uh, succeed? The first thing was... He spent a lot of time relearning the things he had learned from other books and other places because you want a foolproof approach at the end of the day when you go into practicing things, right? And that is the structure and the quality of material that he was looking for. The second part is that once you've learned this, you need to cement those those little, little things that you've learned. And there's no better way to do this than stage two. And again, I'll show you what stage two is and how he kind of got through it. And the final part is bringing all of this together and you know getting yourself ready in terms of stamina and valentine says this in his debrief it's not um, a sprint it's a marathon so when you prepare for a marathon you have to kind of get your stamina up and get yourself comfortable in that uh, testing environment in fact we put you in a harder testing environment in stage three than the gmat itself now i'm going to take you through all of these stages the first stage is you know did you do the course did you do the course fairly well and you'll Look at, you know, master comprehension. This is a fairly basic course and this guy's a native speaker. He still did it. That just shows the diligence, right? Then you look at the sentence correction course he's done. Now, modifiers is one of the topics that is really one of the hardest topics that there is in sentence correction. And you can see the diligence with which it's done. I'll show you verbs as well. And verbs, again, he was very, very good with verbs, which is why you can see he scored. This is one of the hardest practice quizzes we have out there. So if you score 80% on this, and look at the amount of time that he took to do this as well. That's very, very important to kind of see because if you can finish this quiz in about 12 or 13 minutes and score 80%, that shows that you're of certain ability. So is it just by chance that, you know, uh, he, he kind of was doing the course very well? The answer is no, and I'll show you why later. But I, here is, I just kind of want to show you how he's done the course, how the amount of diligence it takes to kind of, uh, you know, go through every little thing and here's a guy who's bcg super smart does you know critical analysis daily and the reasoning daily but he's spending time on these application files to really understand he spent i would say three times the amount that anybody else would do so here here's the diligence factor right and that's very very important to see the second part is how are you practicing practicing is one part but how do you cement what you've learned? How do you kind of do it the right way? How do you kind of imbibe those learnings that, that you kind of took away from, from what you studied? And you're going to see this in the attempt section over here. 
look at how beautifully he's done it so he finished off uh, the sentence correction section uh, in april right after he finished it he started off doing sentence correction cementing so if you look at the scores of course the scores are fantastic but look at how it's been done 21st 23rd 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 so within three days he's completed cementing and that's so important because when you learn something new you kind of need to cement this now from april 24th to 3rd of may he was studying cr that means he studied cr for about 10 days put in a lot of time and then immediately jumped into cementing did the same way now this is what i was talking about when i said test readiness so you might cement things well but you want to kind of mix things up you want to put yourself in a difficult environment with sc and cr questions together and these scores are fairly representative of the same this is what test readiness is and this is intermediate test readiness and this is final test readiness as you can see so here's one thing that that he kind of did well he made sure that he completed all three stages of learning really really well now what was valentine's study plan valentine's study plan was fairly simple he started off with a 73rd percentile in sc but why did he go through the master comprehension and sc goes to because uh, it, it requires a certain amount of skill to be at the 90th percentile. There are so many things that are part of the course that he wanted to learn, which is why he did stage one and, and did the master comprehension course. Then he did cementing and in RC, mind you, he just, he absolutely jumped to cementing. He didn't have to really do much because he was a native speaker and that's why he just jumped directly into cementing. But for CR, he did everything because he saw there was a genuine gap. He's sitting at the 63rd percentile and he was like, I need to do something to push this to the 90th, right? So this was his study plan. This is what it really looks like to follow the three stages of learning. And this is what you saw right at the end as well. Now, how do you define and determine success? What is, where does the support factor come in? So Archit said, listen, I'm looking at your accuracies here. Look at these accuracies and his hard accuracies were about 70% in all questions, all kinds of verbal questions. And he just used up about 400, uh, 500 odd questions out of thousands. So he's used up 50% of the question bank. He's not practicing like crazy. He's just doing focus practice. And let me show you this little screenshot. Look at the way he's creating quizzes. He's creating quizzes to review SC questions, to review RC questions, to review CR questions this is the mark of a diligent student so who valentine was is really coming through the way he's doing the three-stage approach it's not just a three-stage approach it's it's who he is uh, as a person as well that has led him to uh, the score of e45 so ultimately it comes down to three things and this is what valentine would tell you as well it's process it's consistency and it is support and all of this is kind of tied in uh, to with with the diligence that you have and this is what gets you to 760 and this is what gets you into harvard i hope you enjoy this um, you know account walkthrough and uh, if there's any more questions do write to us at support at thank you so much